Welcome to episode two of the Telly Builds. We have our body blanks out of the clamps. We have our caps ready to go into the planer and get thicknessed and glued onto the body. We've got our fretboards kind of roughed out. We're gonna do some work on the fretboards, slotting them and dotting them today. And we have our neck blanks cut out to rough shape. So we're gonna do a lot of work on the router today and get these pieces starting to look like they belong to a guitar. The first order of business is going to be to get these two boards for the drop cap cleaned up in the planer. We need to take these bandsaw marks out and then we need to get them both to the same thickness. We're shooting for just over a quarter of an inch so we have something to clean up on the drum sander. This is both boards put together and we're just over half an inch, so we're at half an inch plus eight thousandths. center lines going. I know how far back I want this thing to sit and I know the guitar is going to sit somewhere like that at the end of all of this. The one thing I learned in the tile industry is that no matter how much you push, there's so much hydraulic pressure on the back side that it'll never, you'll never push air pockets out and that sort of thing. The best thing to do is push forward and pull back. Yeah, you can go kind of nuts with the clamps. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at some point you've got to realize enough is enough. I'm going to give that guy of course, it's going to slide on us. We know that. We know that. Slide it up there. Again, just checking and rechecking those center lines. I went ahead and took my straight edge and put a pencil line there, but it's so hard to see. <laughs> because of the nature of this wood, it's just the thin lines of the wood. But if we get our magnifier out here, that end is right on the mark. That ends on the mark. Now, this is the one you want to nail here. We don't get a second shot. I mean, I guess you can always erase your pencil lines. That's not that big of a deal. Okay. That is on our marks. So now we're just going to take a pencil and go around all of the openings that we're going to use. Although we don't need these bridge pin location marks for the hardware, we do want to transfer them. We'll put a little pencil mark in here. 
just so we can see them. We do need those marks for the template that shows us our neck pocket outline. So we'll line up the center line and we'll transfer those lines around. I do have all of the depths for the cavities marked on the template so you don't have to remember those. I'm going to transfer those over to the body blank and then our first order of business is going to be to bandsaw around the perimeter. some dimensions off of our big template here for the depth of the routes on all of these cavities. We have an inch and 13 30 seconds on the control cavity. We have on the bridge pickup 13 16 Then on our wiring and our neck pickup routes, we're going to be 11 16 deep. And then for the neck pocket, we're 5 8 of an inch deep. What you see here, all these marks are all the different depths. And I usually take an eighth of an inch off because if you look at the tip of the Forstner bits, they stick out an eighth of an inch. So I don't like the little dimples in the bottom of my routes. So I stop the Forstner bits about an eighth of an inch shy. turn our attention to the fretboard now and I jointed this top edge and that's what I'm going to use as a square line to do all the fret work but the first thing I need to do is get a center line on this piece so I can attach another template and I've determined that an inch and an eighth away from this jointed line is the right amount so I'm going to go ahead and scribe that line all the way down with my calipers. Then we have our template here that will follow that. I definitely need a magnifier with the ebony. So it's going to sit something like that right there. I know where I want the nut to sit, so that's kind of what's driving this. And this is a 22 fret. I'm only going to make 21 frets on this guitar. This is a killer little caddy <laughs> that my buddy built me for Starbond adhesives. 
and I've got accelerator already on this side. So we're going to line up where I want my nut, my center line there, and my center line back here. These slots are intentionally very, very tight to a razor blade, and that's to give you accuracy. We don't have an extra thousandths of an inch here, and all we're doing is marking these slots so that we can come back with a marking knife and maybe darken them up a little bit. The next thing we're gonna do is our fret markers. So the pin that's included with your template fits right into these holes. Just gonna give them a little tap. That'll center our drill bit later on when we start doing fret markers. I've got a marking knife here from Farnsworth Guitars, who's on Instagram, but I'm just gonna go through and reinforce all of these lines. So I slide the tool into the line that the razor blade made, and then just pull across, and we'll do that for every fret. This is a cheap flush cut saw from Harbor Freight and the set on it is just the right width for frets. I don't know what this cost, 10 bucks or something like that, but I want to say it was 23,000, something like that. Yeah, 21,000 and then by the time you actually use it, it opens up a little bit more than that. And if you slide this across, it will catch. I'm pushing and I can't get it past that point. So I always do the tip first, and then I pull the back end in, and then I put a square up against the back side, and that just tells me everything's okay. Now, we aren't getting these to depth. We'll do that later. I really like to use my dial calipers for layout. They're incredibly accurate. They have hardened steel jaws, so they they just do a really good job at it, even if you're working in wood and not in metal. I went ahead and laid out a line at 100 thousandths of an inch, so 0.1 inch below the surface of the fretboard for the fret tang. Now, remember, we have to radius the fretboard, so we're gonna lose some on the edges. And you can see if I put the tang up there, the line is a little bit lower than that tang, which is good. That should give us enough room when we radius the fretboard to have room to press that fret in there. If not, when we radius it, we may have to deepen these slots just a little bit. got a plug cutter in the drill press here and we're just going to cut our fret markers out of this ebony here. I went ahead and made a set of fret markers out of the zebra wood cutoff from the body blank, and I think this will do a nice job of tying the body and the fretboard together.
We have our radius sanding jig set up here. I've got a separate video on how to make this and I'll link it in the description below and maybe up in the corner. I don't know which corner it is. It's one of those corners. It basically has a flat and parallel base and then it has two sides that keep this block from moving side to side. You can see that there's zero movement there and that keeps us sanding in a very flat orientation all the way through. It's clamped down to my table saw, so if there's any bow that gets introduced into this jig over time, as I'm pushing down and sanding, that bow gets taken out and the flat reference surface of the table saw translates its way up through all these pieces and parts. When you're a home gamer, when you're a DIY person and you're not doing a thousand guitars and you don't have the fanciest of fancy setups, it's important to have those flat references that just gives your parts that best fighting chance of coming out good. They'll come out good, trust me, they'll come out good. It's just how good are they gonna come out, right? And we wanna do everything we can to make them perfect. So I'm going to be using brand new, not even on the market yet. I'm gonna do a pre-sale on these and give a little bit of a discount uh, to everybody watching this video up until uh, we get our parts back from Anodize, which will be right around the 1st of December, 2021. Um, so these are our radius sanding beams. They're at the machinist right now. He's about two thirds of the way done machining them and then it'll take two weeks to anodize them once he's done. And essentially, these are a lot like some of our competitors, but you'll see in our competitors, there's two different versions. There's ones that'll be colored and then you'll see a machine surface here that's a bare aluminum. Ours are made exactly like that. We machine this face to make it perfect. We anodize after we machine to give this a harder surface. Uh, it increases the Rockwell rating on there, which makes it last longer over time, and I think that's important. Our less expensive competition does not machine this face. They extrude it, and that's how it lives. And sometimes you can feel little ridges in the extrusions. You can feel irregularities in the extrusions. When we machine it, it makes a perfectly true surface. I'm not gonna call it flat because they're all radius. It's a true surface this way and the radius is perfect all the way along. So we think this is a higher quality product. We're also selling it at a price point that's more affordable than our more expensive competition. All 100% made in the USA. We've got them in five inch, 10 inch, 20 inch and we're gonna have them in seven different radii from seven and a quarter inches up to 20 inches. If you wanna order a little bit early, you'll have to wait a little bit till they all come in, but you'll get a little discount. You can buy them individually, whatever size you want, whatever radius you want, or you can buy them in sets of seven, so all the radii in whatever length you want. And then if you really wanna go bonkers, you can order the master set, which will have 21 pieces, and it's seven 20 inches, seven 10 inches seven five inches, all of the radii, and you'll get a pretty decent discount when you do that. So that's enough of a sales pitch. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the technical stuff. I like to use Norton Gold, two grits. I like 80 grit, I like 180. When you get there, you can, you can further refine with 320. I do that with DA pads. I don't use this roll paper like this. That's just how I buy it. It keeps me from having 20 different kinds of sandpaper. What we have is our fretboard. I took great pains to get our center line of the fretboard perfectly aligned with the center line of our radius jig on both ends. And now all we have to do is take our sanding block and do this back and forth, constantly watching to make sure that we're even on both sides in terms of what we're sanding and taking off because these things can roll just a little bit and you can get uneven from one end to the other. I'm looking at the witness lines on both sides here to make sure they're even and they're just a little heavier on the left side here than the right side. So I'm gonna lean on the right side just a little bit. Let's see if we can bring those around.
you can see from the sandpaper that we're just a little bit harder probably on this side than we are on this side. You can also see we're starting to touch in the middle and that's the top of our inlays, that glue that's on there. So that's good. We're starting to take those down just a little bit. I'm looking at the evenness of the scratches side to side and then front to back. So you can see on the base end of this guitar, we're pretty even both sides of those fret dots. And then as we get to the treble end of the guitar, it starts to widen out just a little bit. So we need to put a little more pressure on the far end. And this end is looking really, really good. So here we are just after another minute or two of sanding and you can see we're even pretty much all the way down there. So I'm digging that. I've swapped out to 180. I've got one little low spot right around these two fret markers right here. And we do have to still take off a little bit of material with the 180 to get everything down and smooth. So we'll see if we can get that. If not, we'll go back to the 80 grit and it'll be just fine. But 180 still does take off some material. All right, everybody's favorite part. I think when most people envision making a guitar, they think it's all about routing around templates and it's just easy because that's all you have to do is route around some templates. But as you've seen, there's a lot of prep work that goes in before the templates <laughs> come into play. And that prep work is what's going to make this part of the job a piece of cake. If you don't do that prep work, this will be an absolute nightmare for you because you'll spend the rest of the guitar build trying to recover from whatever it is that you've done incorrectly. Now, uh, you can burnish these down if you have a burnisher. I just give them a real good once over here to make sure the tape is stuck. You do not want this tape coming up. The time that we've put in so far and the lumber and the value of everything that's gone into and up to this point uh, far exceeds what you might save in rushing. So don't rush. Make sure you get everything stuck down good and in the right spot and all of those things. Uh, if you get your template down and it's not in the right place, Tear it all up and get it in the right place. You don't want to mess this step up. So I'm lining my center lines up. I'm looking at my nut line. The nut's lined up right where I want it. The center line. Right where I want it. Give it just a little push. A little bit of pressure there. Make sure. Yep, we've got all the meat that we need around these things. That one's in good shape. Luckily for me, I have two sets of templates, so we'll get this second template set up and then we'll head over to the router. Before I forget, this is usually the time that I go through and mark my tuning peg holes because you want them to line up with this template perfectly. I'm not going to go crazy on pattern bits for routers, but let's do the basics. This is the one I'm going to use. It's an Amana. I'll put a link in the description below, but it's uh, 57178. Uh, stupid expensive, but if you do a lot of patterning, totally worth the money. It has a bottom bearing and a top bearing, and you can take off the collar and remove the bottom, or you can remove the top. But that's the one I use most often because I have it. I have a very powerful router. This one's, I think, three and a half horse that's under here, so very powerful. If you have a smaller router, sometimes the smaller bits are a little bit better, a little easier to use. This one's got a half inch cut, but it has some relief so that if you get your blank fairly close to the size you need it by sanding the edges in, you can roll this along the pattern, cut that first half inch, and then use what you just cut as the pattern for the bottom half. I want to say these are about 15 bucks. I'll leave a link. This one has a bottom bearing. It's a white side, 8146.45. 
and it's a quarter of an inch cut. So if you don't have a very powerful router, this one's great because it doesn't take a very big cut. Each time you just have to step up and you'll have to do a little sanding because you'll see those steps you invariably do. And then the last one is an Amana bit. I think this has a one inch cut or a three quarter inch cut. I think it's one inch. Um, and it's the same bottom bearing. You can put it in a router lift like this one and then you just have to run your template on the bottom side and it will follow that. You can also use it in a plunge router type situation and follow along a template that's taped down to the top of a guitar. We'll be using this one and this one a little bit later when we're routing pickup pockets. a wonderful job on the end grain. I think it's the pattern of the cutter. Both necks came out really good. I made a mistake, not the first one in my life, but when I bought the truss rods for these projects, um, I'm one of those guys who likes to make everything himself and I typically make my own truss rods and I thought, you know, let's break out from that, Greg, and Let's use one of these dual action truss rods that everybody uses. And I got into this project and for some stupid reason I didn't measure everything like I should have. And now that I'm into it, um, I was about to glue the fretboards on with the truss rods in. And I was like, oh yeah, I probably better make you know, the indication of, of where this goes when I started measuring Essentially, the, uh, the opening for this truss rod was going to be lower than the face of the headstock, <laughs> and that doesn't work. So um, I started scratching my head, and I remember when I was putting the, the ideas for these builds together that these were truss rods that operated at the bridge end and not the nut end. And so I wound up having to drill a hole. I just measured and drilled a hole. So these truss rods will adjust at the heel instead of the headstock. So just had to chisel out a little bit of material here. And we do have a spot down here that uh, is where all this adjustment action is supposed to happen. So these are my guitars, by the way. These are not getting sold to anyone, so don't worry. I would never do this on a customer guitar. But we're going to fill up this end with some silicone to keep any rattle that might happen. Just kind of fill that void. And then we're going to fill this end up as well, which I would do normally around any kind of truss rod contraption that might have a tendency to rattle if it's not perfectly tight. So I'm putting too much silicone in there actually, which is fine. We're going to uh, kind of scrape it off. And so what I'm gonna do is press in this end. I've got a little piece of tape in that hole to try and keep the silicone from squeezing in there. And we'll give it a really good push down just trying to get it encapsulated as much as we can. And it looks like I could use just a little bit of extra down here for sure. And we'll push that in with a razor blade. So just trying to fill those cavities. The last thing you want is like a wolf note or something howling in your guitar because you've got a void that's making it or allowing that to happen. So 
we'll fill up both of these cavities and then come back. Just like the neck, we are going to tape our template down, tape and glue our template down to the guitar body and then take it over to the router. Again, we just want to make sure we get enough glue to hold this thing down. We don't want it coming loose in the middle of our route. What I always do is just kind of hold the front up a little bit, get that center line going, then look at the next center line. Then I look at my pickups and adjust kind of east to west there, set it down, make sure I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm inside all my lines, then give it a good push and let it sit for just a minute. While I'm thinking about it, this one's going to have a traditional tele bridge, so I'm going to take my transfer punch and go ahead and hit all of these holes so we have them. white side 3000 and I'll use it for almost all of the routing the exception being this route here is so deep that I will have to use this bit to reach it uh, but this bit will be able to do both pickup routes if we had an electronics cavity it would do that as well and then it could do about 80 percent of this pocket plus the neck pocket so we're just going to roll this up so the bearing uh, is hitting our plexiglass here, go around, do all of those openings, then we'll remove our template and then we'll just slowly lower it down in quarter inch segments till we get to the bottom of each of the routes. We now have the neck pocket template on. We're not going to use these pickup routes because that's not the guitar we're making, but we're lining up these two bridge screw holes and then the center line and the center line here to make sure we've got it oriented correctly. And then you can also use the inside of this pickup opening. Uh, it's the same as this route. So that lets you know you have it on the money when when you're gluing it down or when you're double stick taping it down. Our next order of business is to clear this away and I think uh, at least my tendency is always to want to clear away the edges in the first route and then once you have that rip the template off and go deeper but we have to leave this template on for this front edge because there's nothing to to mark around and the whole router will just sort of fall off the face of the earth. We're gonna set our bit here uh, to kind of the minimum height, go around and then step it down until we get to, I think this is five eighths of an inch on the pocket there. Let's just double check our template. There we have it on the template here. It's written five eighths of an inch deep for the neck pocket. <laughs> Man, I don't know how you guys feel, but that was a lot of work. <laughs> uh, 
we got both of our necks routed on the perimeter. We got the truss rods installed. We got both of our fretboards dotted, slotted, and radiused. And then we got both of the bodies perimeter routed, cavity routed, and ready for final details. The next time we get together, we'll add some custom details to this guitar. We'll do all the final details for the wiring cavities and routes that we need to put in here. And then we'll shape our necks and get the fretboards attached. It should look like a guitar at the end of the next episode and everything will be ready for final prep and finishing. Thanks again for joining me on this build. I hope you're having as much fun with it as I am and I hope you're either building along or thinking about building your own guitar following these instructions. Another quick reminder, if you want in on the pre-sale pricing for these, it'll be on the website for the next probably three weeks until we get the actual pieces in. Once the pieces come in, the prices go up, uh, but we will ship all pre-orders first and then we'll start taking care of other folks. So this will be the best price you'll ever get. No pressure if you don't, if you don't need them or you don't want them, that's okay. Uh, but everybody out there, I hope you have a great week. Take care. If you would like more guitar related content, click that subscribe button. If you want to follow the rest of this build, click the playlist to the right. And as always, visit skyscraperguitars.com for guitar tools and accessories.